Welcome to the Czech Republic. I'm Mali Johnson. I'm joined today by Rebi Simon. And we're in Ratchice for the first International Canoe Federation Canoe Sprint World Cup of this 2022 season. And boy, we've got a busy final day of racing to look forward to today. We have 11 races, 11 A finals this morning to look forward to. We're at the Labe Regatta Course, about 40 minutes drive north of Prague, host of the 2017 World Championships and now home of the Czech Canoe Team and hosting this fantastic event, the 2022 Canoe Sprint World Cup. The first of the World Cups this season and actually the first for several years for many paddlers because New Zealand, Australia haven't been here since 2019 but they're delighted to be here not least because it's a beautiful day there's a light breeze on the course the air temperature as you can see 25 26 degrees water temperatures not far from 20 which makes for good times we saw that yesterday with a reasonably strong tailwind today not so much of a tailwind just beautiful conditions for these paddlers at this fantastic venue there you can see the data on the course well we won't be using 2,000 meters but we will be racing over 1,000, over 500 metres, and right now over 200 metres. We've got multi-junior European and world championship medalist and also Olympian Rebi Simon alongside me here. And Rebi, is there any event particularly that you're looking forward to this morning? Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm really looking forward to the men's C1000 and the women's K2500 the most but I'm excited to see all of them absolutely and so you should be and we're about to get underway with the shorter distance as I said the C1 women 200 meters this is an Olympic event that was the lineup Shuai Changwen from China goes in one Anita Yakome from Spain in two when you Lin Wenyun from China in three Maria Maillard from Chile goes in four Yasser Ladis Dubois in five, Katerina Segura in six, both the Cubans there, very exciting paddlers in pitcher. Maria Corbea from Spain in seven, Katie Vincent, the world champion from Canada goes in eight, and Sofia Jensen also from Canada in nine. This, the 200 meter distance, a little over 45 seconds, I would expect no room for error, a fantastic start from the Cuban, Yasser Ladis Dubois, in lane five, but the business end of the race now and really coming good is the Chinese paddler, Lin Wen Young, sixth at the Olympic Games. She wants a win here at the first World Cup of the season and her red boat is coming close, but not quite enough. Katie Vincent had something to say about that. She was down in lane eight, as did Yasselidis Du Bois there in pitcher. The Cuban looks like she took the win, indeed. Our judges think so. They've got the graphic up very quickly there. Well, goodness me. She was the winner in the C2 200 metres with a teammate who is in the lane alongside her in this very race. She's the winner in this race. She's only 20 years old. Goodness me, she's got a good future ahead of her. Another really tight finish. Another photo finish, I think, between the three, three girls. Yeah, really, really tight. We'll await confirmation of second and third place. But that's what it's like, isn't it? In 200 metres, it's that close. Very, very little room for error. And perhaps when we see the slow-mo, we might get a picture of them coming over the line. Watch out there for lane five. Yeah, looks like that takes the win. And then Chinese paddler perhaps in second. Yeah, I think. And then Katie Vincent third. In the canoes especially, it really comes down to their lunge or the timing of their, their stroke because there's such a big gap between each stroke. Sometimes it comes down to who takes the stroke last before the finish line. Oh well, indeed, it looked like she did that and she'll be down on the pontoon with Ross right now to, uh, to give a little interview. I'm sure she will be delighted. Yes, and congratulations. Uh, very good race for you. How do you feel? Um, I am happy. <laughs> Javi, um, this is one competition very important for my preparation um, for the war and Olympic. It's a really good start for 2022. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. 
It is a good start, isn't it? You can't get your season underway any better than that. Winning the C2 200 meters, the non-Olympic event. Katie Vincent there, congratulating her. And then winning the Olympic event of C1 200. She's a really exciting paddler, isn't she? A great big, broad smile on her face and someone to mark down and watch for the future. There's the result, 45 seconds. That's a good time from Du Bois. Then we had Lin Wen Yun in second and Katie Vincent in third. And this time round, Maria Corbera misses out on the medals. It's all, it's all quite close between the all nine paddlers, which is good to see in women's canoe. They're all, they're all coming up and, and being uh, very close to each other. It's also nice to see the, um, the other Canadian paddler being close to Katie um, after obviously her partner, her C2 partner uh, retired yeah. after the Olympics. So um, that's exciting for them. Yeah, Lawrence Van San Lampoint hanging up her paddles. But of course, as you said, Rebby, lots of young paddlers coming through. Well, we're going to just look at the K1 200 meters. Sadly, not Olympic anymore. And uh, in her interview, Lisa Carrington mentioned how disappointed she was uh, about that. But still, this will be competitive, uh, I'm sure. And a good, as the Cuban said, good preparation for races to come, whether it's Poznan next weekend or perhaps the World Championships uh, later in August. There's nothing quite like getting a race under your belt at this top international level to give you a really useful experience to take into the next phase of training. Well, we'll just take th you through the lineup there. We're just settling with our drone behind some of these paddlers. They're due to start in about three or four minutes time. We'll have Yale Steinpreis. You can see the Australian there she is in pitcher. She goes in lane one. Bolette Iverson from Denmark, we should see very shortly in lane two. And Teresa Portela, now the Portuguese Teresa Portela because there is a Spanish Teresa Portela as well. We'll see her in just a moment. So Bolette Iverson from Denmark goes in two. Then we'll see Teresa Portela from Portugal in three. No doubt she will get away to a good start. She was really strong in the 500 meters yesterday. Yes, yeah, she did amazing. She came through well at the end, didn't yeah, she? Yes, she did, which is unlike her normal race plan. So that was good to see that she must have worked hard on that. Yeah, the back end of the, her race obviously going well because she was always a quick starter. D Dominica Putto from the K4, who looked so good yesterday, the poles, they were delighted with that. And Dominica now turning to the K1. Marta Valchikevich, we've seen her a few times in this event, haven't we? Silver medalist from Rio 2016 in this very event. World Championships in 2019, she was silver medalist as well. European champion back in 2018, she's always there or thereabouts. Anja Osterman, Slovenian, the experienced Slovenian, took a silver medal and put um, Lisa Carrington under a lot of pressure in the 500 yes, yesterday. Did. And then we have Spella Janic, her teammate, and those two were former K2 paddlers. They've gone their own separate ways at the minute and working very well for both of them. Uh, Spella Janic made the B final yesterday and then Ina Klinova from the Ukraine will be in lane 8 and Ella Beer from Australia in lane 9. So just a couple of minutes before we start, Rebi, what do you think about this race? Is it going to be go Valchikevich's way as it has done many times in the past? Uh, I think it's going to be, again, another close race. Um, we've got two very quick starters, uh, Portela and Vajkiewicz. Um So the start will be interesting between them. And then I think anything can happen um, in the 200. So um, I think expect another close race and some girls fighting for it. It's also nice that even though it's not an Olympic event anymore, they're, they're still you know, racing and top athletes are, are racing the event. Yeah, it's important, isn't it? It gives them an opportunity to perhaps prepare themselves for other boats and other distances. Now these just the quiet moments before the start as they prepare themselves and they're under starter's orders. So we'll keep an eye on that start, keep an eye on lane three. She leaps out of the boot there, Teresa Portela in lane three. The Portuguese paddler, we can see in picture lane six, there's Anya Osterman, second place in that 500 meters, that dramatic race yesterday, really asking the questions of Lisa Carrington, but thankfully for Lisa, of course, she had the answers. There's Martha. Valchikevic in the distinctive pink, pink boat that she normally uses, but it is the two Slovenians really smashing it through the centre part of this course. 
And it's going to be very, very close. A black blanket finish across pretty much all of them. Only Valchikevich perhaps is out of this one. But lane four, lane six and lane seven, the two Slovenians. So the Poles, the Slovenians. So look to me anyway, like Anja Osterman had a great race. Certainly looked very, very good early on. They've given her the win. But also I think Spella Janic was right up there. And was it Dominika Puto? Perhaps? That's what I think, yeah. That was a good race. Yeah, great I, th race. I saw Anya got off the start really clearly, and judging from her 500 yesterday, this was expected from her. So good work. Yeah, good start. Good technical model. Her leg model. drive is amazing. Look at that. So great. She's not wearing a spread. It. We can see how much the legs are driving in that. The boat rocking from side to side, but with the leg drive. Will she be able to see the finish there? She goes over the line first. Two lanes above her. Look to be like Dominique Caputo. And then Spella third. Wow. It's interesting actually talking to Andre Jelenc from um, the International Canoe Federation, of course, very involved with the Slovenian team, saying saying that these two Slovenian paddlers, things have gone so well for them since they've changed the way they train. We might find a little bit more when she's finished her snack. She's down on the pontoon with Ross. And yeah. You've had a nice weekend, second yesterday, first today, you're paddling well. <laughs> yeah, well, the start was really bad, but then I catch up. I didn't really train for 200, so this is just a training for 500. But yeah, yesterday, second, today, first, what better could you wish for? <laughs> now, you've trained, you've changed your training circumstances now. You're training uh, with, with the Slovak team, what's happening? Oh, uh, yeah, this year I changed a little bit, and I train with Peter Licker, he's the K4 men coach and this year he's focusing on the girls I asked him if I can join him with Newport and now I'm like a member of the team he helps me a lot so he's so excited with my result this weekend and I'm really happy to well it's obviously working well for you and, and you're looking like you're really happy on the water yeah I didn't expect this like I didn't know what to expect this year like I wanted a bit more time for me and now when it's going so well I'm, I'm excited for <laughs> Like the season ahead, I don't know. <laughs> well, what a great, what a great weekend for you! Congratulations, well done, Anya. Well, maybe that smile I and mean, the attitude and just the fact she's relaxed and she's found what works for her is making all the difference. Yeah, for sure. It's also interesting. She said her start wasn't good because on camera it looked like she got off to a good start, but maybe to her standard, it um, she could do an even better start. <laughs> yeah, and interesting. Also, she said she hadn't really, you know she's not prepared herself for 200 meters and yet yeah. it just shows actually if you're fit and strong enough over 500 meters you can apply that over the shorter distance yeah for sure yeah, interesting so it's about being happy finding the right place hooking for up sure. with the right coach a happy athlete is a fast athlete so <laughs> that's what you need to find absolutely right well any coaches that are listening to that there you go <laughs> and there we've got the results 39 seconds now that is quick 39.72 is, I think, is a world's best time. World's best time. Lisa Carrington, third. No, no, it's no. not. It is. Lisa <laughs> Carrington's a couple of seconds quicker, yeah. actually. But certainly for for a World Cup, that is pretty quick. Yeah. Now we're going to move up to the thousand meters for the men's C1 1000 meter event. This should be really exciting. When we talked early this morning with uh, with Ross, who was down there on the pontoon. He said uh, he was most excited about seeing this race because there's so many great paddlers in it, particularly, of course, Isaquias dos Santos. Always expect something dramatic and spectacular from him, the Brazilian in lane four. But Martin Fuchser in lane six, he won yesterday in his favoured 500 metres, but he really wants to win over 1,000 metres here. Yeah, he must... Um he must get a bit of extra power, you know, racing in front of home crowd. That's that's going to give him a bit of energy. So, and he looks like he's in really good form. So, I think this this is going to be a good show. Yeah, it should be interesting. We've got Pavlo Altikov there, the Ukrainian, and he has been a great representative of the Ukrainian team, uh, really, and has expressed on behalf of all the Ukrainian people, in fact, never mind the canoe team, just how much they appreciate everyone from around the world's help and support. Viktor Glasnov, the Polish, experienced Polish paddler. There he is in the white cap. He's in lane two. Jose Cordova, the Cuban, 
watch out for any Cuban in the canoe events. They are fantastic, as we saw with the Cuban Du Bois winning the women's C1 event earlier on. Ezequias dos Santos, the Brazilian. I mean, what a great character for the sport he is. Very, very difficult childhood. He was scalded, burnt as a child. He lost a kidney. He had a difficult preparation for Tokyo, but still ended up winning this event in Tokyo at the Olympics. He's got other medals to his name from Rio 2016 as well. Kathleen Chirilla was third in the C1 500 meters yesterday. Romanian team, of course, hosting the Ukrainians just near Bucharest in their training center. Martin Fuxer, he goes in lane six, looked good in qualification, won the 500 meters, wants to be the champion here in the 1,000 meters. There he is in his white cap. Expect him to get away well. Balas Adolf goes in lane seven, the Hungarian. There he is in pitcher. Konrad Scheibner. Now, we mustn't discount Konrad Scheibner. We'll see her in just a second in lane eight. European champion, world champion over both distances, 500 and 1,000. There he is. Really burst onto the scene just over the last uh, year or so, taking over from Sebastian Brendel. Sixth at the Olympic Games for him. And then Sergei Tonovsky, the Moldovan, goes in lane nine. There he is. So this race, 1,000 metres. So 1,000 metre race, this is a lot longer than we've been seen, than we have seen. We're talking perhaps around about four minutes. This is about pacing, about tactics, about managing that race. Yeah, and I think all these athletes have very different tactics, so it will be interesting to see which one works out best. Uh, Fuxa normally starts a bit quicker. Santos holds back and comes through the end. Uh, Balaj Adolf, you have to watch out for the back end of his race because he's he's an endurance bunny, so um, it's has good. Yeah, well, they're all away cleanly at the moment. Look to be like Lane Ford, just keeping his powder dry a little bit there. That's his Akias de Santos. As you said, perhaps he's going to come late. The back end of the race will be strong for him. He's a very dynamic and powerful paddler, isn't he? And sort of, I've always felt he was almost physically more suited to the shorter distances, but seems to do so well with the pacing and he's able to ask so much of his body and really, really push himself. Now, from this shot here, we can see four. Oh, we could just see four from the right of the pitcher was the Czech, Martin Fuxer. He seemed to get away well as well. And as, if you, as you've said, Reby, perhaps in this first half of the race, he may well set down a marker for the rest of the paddlers. You can see by the stroke rate of lanes three and four, the Cuban and the Brazilian, the Brazilian have just really settled now. Yeah, you can see Dos Santos normally has a higher stroke rate than, than the rest of the guys, which is why perhaps it looks like he's more suited to shorter distances, but he can always hold it <laughs> right to the end. So, um, and Fuchs's strokes are nice and strong and controlled. Yeah, looks good there in pitcher. Martin Fuchs, a great technician, as many of the Czech paddlers were in the past. Of course, Martin Do Doctor, way back in the day, was one of the finest technicians and it is a really technical event C1 isn't it not only trying to stay in the middle of your lane and try and balance this boat but you've got that long stroke with a big separation in between them as well and you've got to get that as close to the central point as you can to not lose any energy by going left or right yeah and of course sometimes when when there's a side wind um, it can really affect the canoes um, races depending on which side it comes from but luckily it looks like it's pretty straight today so hopefully there won't be any disadvantages to anyone yeah, that's often the case. Sometimes that happens at Zeged, which we, you will know well. You know, it does get yes. windy, and if it's from one side, then the, the, the canoe boat paddlers struggle. But no struggle here, no struggle for folks. It goes through in around about 151, but they're, they're close to him. The Cuban now just about a second and a half, so he's not too far behind there. Jose Cordova, Ezequias dos Santos, well, never discount him he's got a bit of work to do at the moment but there's still a long way to go yet and this a really important part and phase of the race not to let things drop too much yeah this is this is where the race is decided I would say in the thousand this is where it, you're tired but you need to hold on and also need to start thinking about picking up the pace at the end yeah, that's right. You can't save everything for the last 200 metres, can you? Because everybody does that anyway. Yeah, but exactly. Now, this is really interesting, isn't it? That Martin Fuchser has taken this by the scruff of the neck. 
And he is saying, look, I'm confident here. I think I can get out. My training's good enough. I'm fit enough. I've got the technique to hold on. Now it's up to the others to really push him and put, on, put him under pressure. Yeah, and I think he'll, from the crowd, he, he's going to get that little bit extra at the end. So, so maybe he knows that and he knows to... He knows he can go a bit harder because he'll get that at the end. That's a good point, of course, on home water, isn't he? The pole, we need to watch for Viktor Glasnov over the, at the top of your picture. The Polish paddler's going well at the moment. He's trying to put Fuxa under pressure. Nothing really from the Brazilian Ezequias de Santos at the moment. Martin Fuxa really has a commanding lead. And he's now into the red boys, and he'll know he's got the support of the crowd. He's got the support of the coach, as you can see, cycling alongside him. Really, this is his to throw away, but he's got clear water over the other paddlers. Only the paddler next to him, Kathleen Chirilla, who's been in great form taking the bronze medal in the 500-meter event, trying to put him under pressure. But there's no way that Fuxa is going to give it up from there. Indeed, he takes the win, followed by the Romanian, and look to be like the endurance athlete that you said, Adolf, uh, with the third place there. Yeah, that was... That was an exciting finish. Everyone was either coming up or trying to hold on in the last 50 meters. Yeah, well, and, and, and a really impressive race for Martin Fuchs. He was interviewed by the International Canoe Federation. There he is in picture a little while ago. He really wanted to win this 1,000 meters. He knows he's good over 500. He's done it many, many times. And he's fought it out with the likes of Isaquias dos Santos and Sebastian Brendel from Germany in the 1,000 metres and, and quite often come up wanting, never quite winning the gold medal. But this time round, he dominated that event. He set his stall out really early, goes through the 500 metres, first through the split, but then built on that lead and actually extended towards the end. Yeah, he controlled that race really well. Um, I think he took the lead and, and he, could, he, he did what? He wanted to kind of with with the rest of the um, the guys. So, congrats to him. That was really impressive. Good result. Good result for the Czech team. Czech media down here. Very supportive of the slalom paddles. But great to see their sprint paddles getting a impressive win. And actually, look, it wasn't the pole, was it, that took third place? In actual fact, it was indeed. Mm -hmm. Though, as we said, the Hungarian, it was. And so, as you said, you know, he's good. Um, endurance athlete and came through obviously had the confidence to believe in himself in the latter yeah. part of that yeah he's very good at just kind of blocking everything out and doing his thing well yeah and that's it and he certainly did there just ahead just a couple of tenths ahead of Viktor Glasnov who missed out on the medals that's interesting so 347 is a quick time there for these these paddlers that's very impressive and um, you know we don't that often see around the 340s. Not not quite world's best time, but that's pretty quick. And we hope he'll have a quick word for the crowd. It'll be desperate to hear from him. Ross is down there on the pontoon waiting for Martin Fuchser and find out if he's how he feels about the race. Well, I think we can tell already. Well, Martin, you've waited for such a long time for this, and now it's finally arrived. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It, I am the same feelings like yesterday. It was really tough race because, you know, 1,000 meters uh, isn't easy. But I'm really happy that I can be uh, another on the podium in front Czech crowd. So I'm really happy, and thank you for all. But, but not just on the podium, on the very top of the podium. Um, we don't see you up there a lot. You, you get a lot of silvers, but now you have a gold medal. This must mean a lot to you. Yes, for sure. I like gold medals much, <laughs> more, much more. So, you know, uh, I said yesterday that I'm home. I must be first in the finish line, like on the training, like on the competition. So I'm really happy that I can be first again. You want to uh, say something to the Czech audience in Czech? Děkuji všem, kteří přišli na světový pohár a doufám, že tohle nebyla poslední mezání akce, na které jsem se tady mohl zúčastnit a děkuji, že přišli, díky. Congratulations, well done, man. So Martin Fuchs the winner in yesterday's C1 500 meter race. Now he's got two of those gold medals, the winner in the 1,000 meters. Crowd are delighted, he's delighted and a great start to his season.
didn't see as much as we might have hoped from Izaquias dos Santos, but there's always the rest of the season to go. We'll look forward to seeing a medal ceremony of the K1 women 200 meters coming up very, very shortly. And after that, it'll be the turn of the men's K2 1000. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalist for the women's kayak. So Thomas Konechko, the new president of the International Canoe Federation, will be giving out the medals for this women's K1 200 meters. Bronze medalist is Spela Janic, Slovenia. So Spela Janic. Both these Slovenian paddlers, including Anja Osterman, have changed the way they train and it's really working for them at the moment. She's delighted with her bronze medal. And then we will see Polish paddler coming up very shortly, taking the silver. Dominika Puto, winner in the K4 yesterday, now silver medalist in the K1 200 meters. Uh, popular winner Anja Osterman, big smile on her face when she was interviewed, big smile on her face now, changed the way she trains, paddles a lot with the Slovakians, it's really worked for here in both the 500 metres and this 200 metre distance and quite possibly we're going to see more of her on the podium in the future, maybe next weekend in Poznan and who knows, perhaps at the World Championships in Halifax. So the medalist for the K1 200 metres and we'll get ready. We've got seven or eight minutes to wait for the men's K2 1000 metres, Rebi. And what do you think, what will these paddlers make of the medals at a World Cup? Um, obviously, they're probably thinking about things further ahead as well. Yeah, but I also think no matter what race it is, really, t to get on the podium is going to give you a confidence boost going into um, you know, the rest of the season or, or the rest of this uh, Olympic block. So um, I, I don't think they'll be thinking, oh, it's just the World Cup. Or, so I think everyone will be really happy to, to get on there. And I guess it will be a good feedback of how their training's gone this year and how their winter's been. So, yeah, I think they'll be impressed to get on. Yeah, it's interesting to see those that, that that are in the medal, some of which think that I'm about where I expected. Others, like Anya Osterman, think, well, actually, I'm a little bit surprised, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I suppose you take that into the mix and then and then put it into the training plan. I guess there's not a lot they can do between now and Poznan, but then they'll be thinking beyond that for the World Championships. Yeah, at least they'll know they're on the right tracks and, and to kind of just keep going with, with what they've started this year with. Indeed. Well, we can see there the lineup for the men's K2, 1,000 meters. Now, we've got a few minutes before that's due to start. We'll just take you through the lineup. We've got Anderson and Anderson from Sweden in one. Yongkai and Chi from China in two. Westhausen, but in this case, Pierre Westhausen, the younger brother of Jean and Havard from Australia go in three. We'll just let the camera catch up with us. There we go. Anton Anderson and Eric Anderson. Hopefully following in the footsteps are they of Marcus. Brothers? They are indeed, yeah. They are. Just three years separating them. And quite often the case, isn't it, in crew yeah. boats? You'll find siblings. And... Uh, Good tradition in this event, the Swedes, of course, with Marcus Oskarsson and Henrik Nielsen a few years ago. And we'll have the Chinese crew, Yong Kai and Chi. There you can see just in the picture there, to the right of your picture. 
we'll have the Australians Pierre Westhosen, who is the brother of Jean Westhosen, who's the Olympic champion in this event. He teaming up with Noah Havard, who was ninth in the K1 500 meters. Serbia, there we'll go in four, Holpert and Zoric. And then another Czech crew, Sobisek and Kulic. We've been World Cup finalists, not with each other previously, but uh, with different partners in the past. The first Danish crew of Bride and Knudsen will go in six. Fernando Pimenta, double Olympic medalist and champion in the K1 1000 meters. He did really look magnificent yesterday. He's teaming up with Joao Duarte. Uh, they'll be in lane seven. Christian Farstad and Gustav Bock from Denmark in eight. Joseph Zarora and Jakob Stejgal from Czech Republic again will go in nine. So, Tokyo Olympics, we had Australia, which was Thomas Green and John Vester van der Westerhausen winning the gold medal. Germany with Hoff and Schopp were in second. Dostal and Slough, who we saw earlier in the C final of the 500 metres, they were the bronze medal winners in Tokyo. Now this event, of course, no longer an Olympic event, which is a shame. Um, and uh, many of the paddlers are actually putting their eggs in the 500 metre basket, but still it looks like it's going to be competitive over the 1,000 metres. Yeah, and it looks like a lot of nations kind of use this to to give an opportunity to their development paddlers and and, and younger athletes coming up, or in, in the Portuguese case, I think I'm pretty sure uh, the other guy, Pimenta's partner, is, is quite young, so that must be really exciting for him to paddle with one of his idols, I guess. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> I mean, he's not even 20. So we've got Pierre Westhausen from Australia in lane three. He's not 20 yet. And neither is Joao Duarte uh, in the Portuguese boat. And uh, as politely as I can, Fernando, Fernando Pimenta is definitely over 20. <laughs> um, uh, but a real uh, sort of statesman of the sport um, and very, very highly respected. And you're right, imagine paddling behind him and the sort of things that the, the paddlers will learn um, from paddling behind such an experienced oh, yeah, for sure. uh, paddler. Yeah, so, so as you say, a development event. Now, if the Olympics is looking for 500 meter paddlers, 1,000 meters still relates to that. Oh yeah, for sure, because even within the 500, it's not as much tactics as, as the 1,000, um, but there are still some tactics you need to apply to it, and there's a lot of people, like there's a lot of tactics that people use so there's some people that go out fast and try and hold on or people that come through the end so you know those athletes that come through the end um the thousand will be helpful for them yeah you're right we saw that didn't we in the c1 uh, just a little bit earlier today so we're just going through the lineup now we had sweden in one china in two australia in three serbia in four czech republic in five denmark we just saw bride and knudsen in six then there he is, Fernando Pimenta, choosing not to wear his cap. Now, I wonder what's happened to that. It's very unusual, <laughs> Fernando <laughs> yeah. Pimenta, isn't it? Almost didn't recognise him. He's with the young paddler there, Joao Duarte, just behind him. They go in lane seven. Christian Farstad and Gustav Bock from Denmark again in lane eight. There they are in picture in the white shirts and kayak. And then Zahora and Steshkal from Czech Republic in nine. Now, interesting, no Germany in this. Of course, they're really trying to put, you know, focus on crew boats, but focus more on the 500 meters. But it's unusual to see no German crew in the 1,000 meter final. So here we go. You can see just the shot from the drone there. Paddlers, paddlers facing towards us. As Rebbe said, tactics very, very important in that race. So to the left of the screen was lane one. To the right of the screen was lane nine. We'll see, here we go, there's the shot that we want. We can see there it is lane five and lane six got away well there. So the Czechs getting away well, the Danes getting away well. And, uh, and the Australians yes. as well. Well spotted, yeah. Australians uh, over there in lane three away well. Portuguese perhaps not quite as good start as we expect. A little bit different maybe to what Fernando Pimenta would do in his K1, but they're there or thereabouts. And as you said, we may well see quite different tactics in this race. Yeah, the, there's going to be, just like we saw in the C1000, there's going to be uh, crews here that are kind of come through the end of the race because it's a long race. 
you, you need to get to the end and you need to be able to to last um, that three to four minutes. Well, indeed, yeah. We've seen some amazing times of the likes of Hoff and Shop, haven't we? You know, uh, not much over three minutes, almost a K4 time in the K2. We may not see quite that quickly in this race, but uh, young Van der Westhausen there, only 19 years old, Pierre, but he saw his older brother win a gold medal at Tokyo and perhaps he wants a gold medal for himself and he's putting himself in a pretty good position to get one here in the thousand meters at Rechitze but lane six that is the Danes they've got something to say about it as have the Portuguese next to them who are coming through just nicely now and being tracked as well by the other Danish crew of Farstad and Bok in lane eight so lane six looking pretty good at the moment yeah, they're all they're all looking controlled, and it looks like this is when the the different tactics will kind of come into play. You can see some some boots catching up, some boots going a bit bit back. Yeah, you can. You've got three next to each other there, haven't you? You've got Denmark, Portugal. Denmark once again fighting out out there over to the left of your screen at the minute. The Australians on the right, just trying desperately to get on terms with the Danish. Now there's the Portuguese. Fernando Pimento, well, he's huffing and puffing a bit, but that boat is moving well. Yeah, and I wonder if the three of them down down this end, kind of lane six, seven, and eight, they can see each other so they can kind of fight against each other, whereas the Australians are a bit out of the picture, so they won't really see what's going on. Yeah, they've got to do their own race and really ominously coming through just nicely and smoothly. The Portuguese have got a decent lead. So we're in the final quarter of this race. In fact, we're less than that, only about 150 metres to go. And if these two can hold it together, then they've got a great chance of taking the gold medal. Some nice close-ups there. The Danish are holding it together. But as we pan out, we will see that the Portuguese are still leading the way. Now, less than 100 metres to go within the Red Boys. Quick look round from Fernando Pimenta to his right, but he needs to look to his left because the Danish that have been tracking them all the way, Farstad and Bok, are beginning to put them under pressure. And the young Joao Duarte has to hold on here. He's going to. It's going to be a fantastic win for the Portuguese. The Danish in second and look to be like the Australians quite possibly with a great back end, a nice final 200 metres from them, maybe just nipping in for the bronze. Oh, that's, that's so nice to see them so happy. Yeah, they're absolutely delighted. It'll be interesting. That's amazing, yeah. Well, when they come round to the pontoon, when they get an interview, then we might see how many times they've paddled with each other. They, they, you know, they may well not have done many sessions together in the crew, so they wouldn't have known where they were at. And if you watch the start there, they weren't away to the best of starts, but came through so well in the, the later part of this race. There they are going to 200 meters. So 200 meters to go, they were in the lead. They've managed to extend that, certainly from the Danish on their right, but it was the Danish crew on their left, Farstad and Bok, that were coming good but Pimenta and Duarte maybe they're a name to watch for the future possibly in K2 possibly in K4 a great win from them absolutely delighted and I'm very hopeful that they will come and have a chat with Ross Fernando Pimenta certainly doesn't mind doing that in fact sometimes it's quite difficult to get him to stop talking um, but we do hope that in a few moments time we'll see him and look like Australia there we saw the slow-mo going over for the bronze medal. Oh, I just love that. That's what it's all about, yeah, isn't it? Big exactly, smiles. Exactly. Slapping the fist on the deck, actually in perfect unison as well. <laughs> yeah. Shows they've got very <laughs> good timing. Maybe they practiced that. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, the Portuguese crowd. Uh, there we go. Here's Fernando. Fernando, Fernando, what are you doing in the K2? We don't see what, what happened. Did you get in the wrong boat this morning? Yeah, we come uh, in K2 1000 to give more experience to Zhuang. It's first year of senior. Last year he do a very good season in K1 junior 1000, and uh, now in this season he is my partner in full time, and uh, to give 
some opportunity to do one different race and also for me because I don't do uh, boat team boats a, lo a long time and now I think uh, you across to the to João and João will speak a little bit more. Joe, for you to pedal alongside this man here, it must be a, an incredible experience. Yeah, of course. Uh, a year ago, I couldn't expect like uh, be training with him, be even more uh, racing with him. And it's a great honor pedaling with a legend, with one of my idols, and I'm so happy. <laughs> you did really well, guys. Congratulations. Yeah, well done. So much. Well, maybe there is a plan there. They're obviously thinking about the future, and I'm sure Fernando Pimenta is, and what, what, what boat he'll take part in in the Paris Olympics in only three years' time, and uh, perhaps that's one to mark down for the future. That almost made me a bit emotional, because <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy for Joao for, to, to be training with his, sounds like they're training together now, um, training with his, his idol and yeah. like legend, as he said, and for, for Fernando to give him an opportunity like this it must mean a lot to him. Absolutely, so Portugal... And we had Denmark and then Australia, as you saw from that. And we'll head up to the start of the 1,000 metres once again for the K1 women. So Alida Gasso, I should say, is a world champion, as you can see there. Tenille Hatton, she was quite a competitor for New Zealand over this distance. This, unlike the men, is a non-Olympic distance. But we have had a B final that we saw earlier, so it's quite competitive in this event. Yeah, and, and there's a there's a lot of good uh, good athletes in in this event as well. So I think this will be a good race. Indeed, it should. It's an endurance event, so four minutes of racing here. It'll be important that they pace themselves, that their technique holds up. You can see that lovely picture of the surrounding area, all very very green, full of trees. Helps to protect the course here, the Labe Arena Regatta Course, and. Um, just a little bit of light breeze on the water at the moment, which the paddlers will be pleased about. It's quite a strong tailwind yesterday, not quite as much uh, today, but good conditions and fair conditions for the paddlers, consistent right the way across the regatta course. There we can see Edila has over. Maria Virik from Norway, we'll see in lane two. Very experienced paddler, won a World Cup at last year. Made the final of the World Championships in this event last year as well, just outside the medals in fifth place. There she is. Very smooth technician, Maria Virik. Mariana Petrosova from Slovakia. She goes in lane three. There she is. The Slovakian. And then we'll see Julia Hegert from Germany in four. Uh, she'll be wanting to put down a good marker for this race, and give herself opp give herself opportunities of being in those those Olympic boats over Olympic distances. Alyssa Bull, Alyssa Bull, very experienced paddler here, great endurance athlete, and uh, fifth at the Tokyo Olympics in the K2 with Alice Wood. Over 500 metres. Lilia Zendi from Hungary goes in six. Next to her, the pole, Justina Isrika. She's got a bronze medal from Tokyo in the K4s. She's not in the K4 this time round. There's been a few switches, a few changes. But she did take part in the 500 metres K1 and made the A final there. And then Isabel Contreras, the compact dynamic Spaniard. There she is in lane eight. And then Aneska Palodova, the Czech paddler, in nine. So it could be interesting, this one. Yeah, um, it's nice to see two Czech paddlers. So um, like in the in the C1000, they'll, they'll get a bit of a boost from the crowd, I think. And the middle lanes... Um, I think we'll get very competitive through the whole race, so it will be exciting. Yeah, we also got Hegert, Bull, Sendi, 
Hungarian, so Germany, Australia and Hungary are in the kind of pole positions there, aren't they? And yeah. may maybe if a race develops between those three, we can see them push them push each other on. So five from the top of your screen there. That would be the best start probably coming from the Australian. Alyssa Bull. She wants to get out hard, get out get out early and then settle into her race pace. Yeah, I think she'll she just want to do a good start and then control the race, kind of set her own pace. Yeah, we saw that, didn't we, in the C1, 1,000 metres. Martin Fuchs did exactly yeah. that, got away well, um, then found his race pace and didn't go mad, but just get, kept control of it and had enough of a lead in order to do that. Now, Elizabeth hasn't got that yet, has she? There's a few that have gone out hard. And we see the German over in lane two. I think as, the, as, as we pan out, we'll just see there's a couple of others there. We've got lane seven, the Polish. Izerika, who's spent time in the crew boats. She's going pretty well uh, as well, as actually is Maria Virik um, from Norway in lane two. And the Hungarian girls kind of uh, keeping up with, with uh, Elisa Ball as well. So I think it would be good for her to have her next to her. She can try and try and go with her. Yeah, judge your pace a little bit off Alyssa Ball. We sometimes see that, don't we? And if a paddler goes away early and leads, the difficulty with that for that paddler is, of course, they don't know where everybody else is. But if you're behind, you can keep an eye out and you can watch and try and track them. There's uh, Virik, the Norwegian. She looks like she's working really hard at the moment. Alyssa Ball looks fairly relaxed. And this is a real key part of the race as we get towards the 500 meter mark. She looks like she's she's really relaxed and, and controlled. I'm sure it's hurting now <laughs> already, but it doesn't look like it is for her at the moment. Yeah, and a really good shot we saw from head on of Alyssa Ball there. Um, really crisp strokes, making the most of her technique and getting a really good feel and a, a, a lock onto that water. She's a long way ahead of the rest, nearly three seconds. Norway, Poland and Hungary just behind. The Hungarian obviously will have to watch that she doesn't get affected by the wash that Elisa Bull's, Elisa Bull's giving off if she gets too far behind. Yeah, it can either either be helpful, but can also be very uh, not helpful. Yeah, look at that. Goodness me, she's a long way ahead there, isn't she? We're only just past the halfway mark. You know, we've got another minute and a half to go, but this is, she's an absolute country mile ahead of the rest of the field. Yeah, this is her thing. She loves this kind of thing. And she loves the challenge, so she'll be, she'll be enjoying it out there for sure. Yeah, and you've said that, happy paddler happy athlete is a successful one and she sure. looks like she's enjoying herself and she can just kind of soak it up she'll get a sense that she's a long way in the lead she's keeping that stroke really really long maintaining a nice upright posture you can see from her there and um, clearly enjoying herself yeah and she does a lot of um, surf ski as well uh, back in Australia and I think I mean, I don't know too much about it, but I think they're, they're, they're quite long races, which will, of course, help her in, in these kind of events. Yeah, and that's where so many of these Australian and New Zealand paddlers come from, isn't it, from surf lifesaving. Yeah. They learn a lot of skills about controlling the boat, but also the surf skis are very heavy. You've got to be really strong to move it through the water. And as you've said, a lot of endurance events in there, and she'll have a lot of background from that and she's got a huge lead over the rest of the field. It'll be interesting to look at second place two, seven and eight, really fighting out Hungarian, um, sorry, the Pole and the Spaniard actually uh, coming well to the fore at the moment. No doubt over who's going to win this. Alyssa Ball could stop Pali now if she chose to. She takes the win, but it's going to be close for that second. Oh, very close. Poland and Spain are in the medals, but which way around, I'm not quite sure. Well, she's delighted at that, isn't she? I mean, and as you said, it takes it out of you. Four minutes of really hard aerobic work is not easy, but when you get a win, somehow you can cope with that a little bit better. Yeah, uh, and it's really nice to see that all of her teammates cycled alongside her and cheered her on. So I'm sure that helped her while she was ahead of, of the field. Yeah, I'm sure it did, and actually she dominated that race. I think she was she was ahead right from the very first stroke to the final stroke there, just completely dominating uh, the rest of the field. And it was really a scrap for the other two positions. No one was going to put Alyssa 
ball under pressure. Now I'm hoping that she'll be surfing round shortly um, down to the pontoon to be with Ross. She will in just a couple of moments' time. We'll, get, we'll just clear up the minor placings, if you like. We should be able to see that now as we go over the line. No doubt about this ball. Now if we look at the bottom of the screen, it's on the lunge. Oh. <laughs> So maybe Justina Izarica from Poland just getting ahead of Il Isabel Contreras. It's hard to tell with the with the white boots on, the, on that finish line. It is indeed. We'll have to leave that for the photo finish. Now we'll switch in a minute to the camera on Alyssa Bull. She's got a spray deck off and we will see her down on the pontoon with Ross. <laughs> Stop swearing. <laughs> Alyssa Ball, yeah, I know how much you love that race. Uh, you love the 1,000 metres. It was a really, really good race for you. Yeah, I mean, it was a good race. Um, I've done a little bit of 1,000 metre pace and work, but coming back from injury, it's only been about sort of almost six weeks back in the boat, probably working hard. So I did a lot of work on the bike the last four months. Uh, it feels good to be back. Tell us a little bit about that injury. What happened? Um, I was racing surf, uh, the Surf Island Women's Series in the, over the summer, and tore two lig ligaments in my wrist so um, yeah a bit of a blow not quite the start to the international season that we wanted but um, here we are we're back I'm over it so I can't wait to get stuck in come August. Now your K2 partner is probably sitting at home watching if she's not having off having a baby you haven't been to many events without her for a while have you got a message for her? Uh, I haven't been on the team without you AB and it's certainly different but I'm doing my best to keep the the AB right name running strong I uh, miss you. Um, doing really well with young Twiggy in your in your pouch there, and I look forward to coming home and seeing you bring her into the world. And of course, you've had a big announcement. You're uh, you're getting married soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm engaged now. So, hello to my fiance Cody back home, and he's hanging out with a dog. I've got a big shoes to fill. I've got to try and squeeze my way back into that relationship, but no, nah, it's good. Well, congratulations, AB. Great race today. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. Well, great interview from her, apart from the uh, strong language. Apologies for that if you picked that up just at the very start there. But yeah, it, it was a, perhaps an indication of just what it takes out of you, even when you w win, a, win a race, as Alyssa Ball did in 3.53 there. Justina Izarica from Poland in two, and Isabel Contreras from Spain in third place. But joint second. Oh, sorry, joint, well yeah. spotted, yeah. <laughs> joint second, in fact. So, wow. in fact... They couldn't separate them. I thought, and perhaps you're right, it's that white uh, bow of the kite. It's difficult to tell. I thought maybe the pole had just got ahead of the Spaniard, but we leave that to the judges. Uh, well spotted, Rebbe. Second place, a joint second place. It's that close. Strange, really, wasn't it? There was a huge margin between first and second, but then between second and third, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't separate them at all. So, not long until we'll head up to the start of the 1,000 metres once again. This will be the last 1,000 metre race of this morning. It'll be the C2 Men 1,000. There we can see just from the graphic, the line up there. Watch out for the century pitcher. Sebastian Brendel. How many World Cup medals do you think he has? I don't know. Hard <laughs> to put a number on it, isn't it? But it's certainly I'd a few. Say, I'd say about 40. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. He's been around for a long time. Yeah. He's won a lot of medals, C1 and C2. You know, so there were some people thought maybe he'll retire after Tokyo. But him and Tim Hecker, well, they, they, they found something in Tokyo to pick up a medal. And uh, they found something in here to get themselves center of the echelon in the C2 Men 1000. Who knows? He may well pick up another medal. I'm sure to him each one is very special. So race due to get underway in around about three minutes time so gives us enough time to go through the lineup check boat of Josef Havlik and Viotek Novacek they're in lane one Danielle Santini and Nikolai Krachun in lane two for Italy Craig Spence and Brett Hillman from Canada go in three there's the Italians you can see in picture there just preparing themselves there's the Canadians. Andreas Dittmar, former Olympic champion from Germany, part of the Canadian setup. And Canadian.
Canadians really resurgent team here at the first World Cup of this 2022 season. Yuri Zalbul and Anton Hrabal from the Czech Republic. Another Czech boat in this with two of them in this race. Martin Fuchser already has a gold medal from both C1 and uh, C1 500 metres and 1,000 metres. There's Sebastian Brendel. Huge man at the front of that boat, backed up by Tim Hecker. Watch out for them, particularly over the last half of this 1,000 metre race. They are the bronze medalists from Tokyo. They are the European champions. Eduard Strychek and Peter Kizek from Slovakia go in six. And the Polish team will be in seven. There they are, white caps. That's Dominic Nowacci and Lukasz Witowski. Portuguese, Bruno Alf Alfonso and Marco Apura. They go in eight. They've just seen their teammates win in the same distance in the kayak double. Can they do the same here? Ukrainians, Viktor Sredyuk and Andriy Zakharov. They go in lane nine in those distinctive yellow shirts. Fairly close start. Good start from Alfonso and Apura from Portugal, but they are very good 200 meter paddlers, and this is a very, very different matter over a thousand meters. So expect Sebastian Brendel and Tim Heck Hecker to go well. Not necessarily going to be the leaders early on, although they have got away to a good start. Yeah, and it's also nice to see a full race like. Um you know, they're all quite close here as well, and being competitive, even though unfortunately this isn't an Olympic event anymore, of course. Um, and it's also nice to see, of course, the, the top German boat racing this event. Yeah, it is indeed. It's, it's, it's a shame, of course, that they've shortened this Olympic discipline. No longer Olympic, but it will be in the 500 metres, which is a similar energy system. So I guess these paddlers still see the value uh, in doing the 1,000 metres race. And as you said, uh, Rebby, it's still competitive, which is really, really good to see. Seemed to be like lane eight got away well, as we've said, the Portuguese, but I would expect them to fade a little bit as we get through this 1,000 metres. Canadians, well, they could be good over the 1,000 uh, metres. They have been, uh, other Canadian crews have been in the past. They've got a great coaching setup, as I said, but it looks like Brendel and Hecker, as they get towards the halfway point, have a commanding lead. Just have to wait for that camera angle to pan out. We'll see those splits coming up in the next few seconds. Here we are. Yeah, they have about a boat length on, on the rest of the, of the guys. So Germany, Poland to their left, Italy to their right. Right up there. There they are. Brendel, that big figure. I always wonder. It must be quite difficult for poor Tim Hecker to see around him. Yeah, he's probably just, just paddling and, and fighting. Yeah, he just knows what he's got to do. And, and I guess yeah. you're right, and you'll know this as a, as a K4 paddler. You know, quite often in a K4, you can't see very well. There's a splash, the spray yeah. going everywhere, but you feel the boat. Yeah. You know yeah. exactly what your job is. Yeah, you don't really do the, you know, you don't paddle with, with the guys ahead or girls ahead of you by looking. You, you do it all on feel. So not going to make a difference to him and, and their C2 if he can see or not really. It might even help if he can't see too much of the race and doesn't know how much is left. Yeah, just concentrate on the job in hand, concentrate on the process as athletes keep saying. And if you watch the blade work, certainly seem to be going in together but also is that where they put the, where do they put the pressure onto the water and they seem to be doing it at the same time. They found a really good partnership, these two, and perhaps that's why Brendel has decided he wants to carry on. He feels like he's found something in this C2 that can do some good things in the future. Yeah. So, we're approaching the uh, red boys at the end. Germans have a good lead. It's very difficult to see them give that lead up from there, but you can see just a couple of lanes to their right it looks like the Italians may be making the best of the challenge, certainly for the silver medal, but I don't think anyone's going to take the gold off the Germans. Hopefully I haven't put the commentator's curse on them there, but we can see from the camera, yeah, Germany a long way ahead of the rest of the field in about three and a half minutes, which is a fast time. Italy second, I think Poland third. It was close for third between Polish and 
Canadians. Yeah, so Canadians coming well towards the end there. It's a fairly new crew. And as we said, the Canadians are really looking to develop their squad. So close to third place, even if they were fourth, they're not far off. Germany got away to a good start, actually. We, we knew the Portuguese would, they did, but they faded. Germany got away well, but just found the length in that stroke through the middle section middle 500 meters in order to pull away from the rest of the field and although the Italians came hard Santini and Kratchun towards the end the Germans had already done enough so looking really really strong uh, amazing just how many times on Planet Canoe we've seen Sebastian Brendel pick up those medals in World Cups, World Championships, European Championships and Olympic Games. He's got another one to his name, Tim Hecker alongside him. And uh, yeah, it looked like the Canadians perhaps just missing out that time on a medal. And uh, Sebastian Brendel and Tim Hecker are just making their way round to the pontoon now and I'm sure the easy-going nature of Sebastian Brendel will mean he'll be more than happy to chat with Ross down there now. Sebastian, Tim, Sebastian, we've been missing you on the podium for a little while. It's nice to see you back up there on the top. Uh, we was not so long, not on the podium, so yesterday was tough. Our favourite distance is, was a thousand metre. Now we have to change. Um, and but we know that we have a lot of work in front of us but it's just the first world cup yeah. and tim you got you still have the passion both of you for for this race for the for the c2 of course yeah we still have the passion uh the passion increases by the 500 um the other athletes from the different countries are pretty strong and it's uh, pushed us also forward so it's good Great to see you both back there, up there on the top of the podium. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I think Sebastian Brendel was just a little put out by Ross's question. About <laughs> it's been a while since he's been on the podium. Um, I think perhaps meaning the top step of the podium. And uh, I said easygoing nature, but of course, any elite athlete will be really, really competitive and driven to succeed. And I'm sure uh, it's no different for those two. Yeah, but they seem like they're up for the challenge, like they said there. They're motivated by by the other nations stepping the game up for the 500, so I think they'll get there. Yeah, indeed. And uh, the boost you get from from winning a medal is is so important, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is only going to help them. You know, it's, it's still a it's still a tough race, C2000. It's not it's not that far off from from the 500. So for them for them to see that they they won this and. They, they ruled that field, so I think that will give them a bit of confidence. Yeah, they really dominated that, didn't they? And uh, yeah, it's funny just mentioning the um, mentioning yesterday they were in the final of the C2 500 meters, going from lane nine. And we had two. That was where two Spanish crews, in fact, took the medals, the, the gold and silver, and the Italians were in third place. So there is a bit of work to do for Brendel and Hecker, but I think they'll take confidence from that. It's a quick time. You know, a long way ahead of the rest of the field and have just looked to shorten that up, as I guess, as the season progresses. So that's the C2 Men 1000 metre final done. We have 500 metre races only to come next this morning. We'll be looking at the C1 Women 200 metre medal ceremony coming up very shortly. That should be in a couple of minutes' time. So we'll have a medal ceremony for the women's 200 metres coming up. Then that will be followed by the C1 women 500 metre final, K2 women 500 metres and K2 men 500 metres. So quite a few races to pack in shortly after this medal ceremony. So Ravi gives you a chance to say, well, what are your plans? So you were through into the B final of the K1 um, yesterday. Yeah. Where do you, where do you go from there? Uh, so uh, I'm off 
to Poznan tomorrow, um, and the rest of the GB girls uh, will join me from Nottingham there. So um, we will race the K4 next weekend in Poznan. And then we've got our World Champ selections back in Nottingham the weekend after. So a busy few weeks. Yeah, busy few weeks. So over to, to Poznan. Next World Cup, many of these athletes are driving over um, to Poznan for uh, the World Cup next weekend. We've got Para Canoe as well. I hope that you'll join us at Planet Canoe um, for that. As we see a couple of the British paddlers enjoying <laughs> yeah. themselves. <laughs> and um, and then, of course, you'll have the national selection in Nottingham. Uh, yeah. I think, I think in fact, is it, am I right in thinking it's Hungarian selection no. next weekend? Yes. So we won't yes, see the Hungarian right. paddlers no. at Poznan. They won't be coming to Poznan. Um, and then so that'll be selection. Then the next big race, of course, will be the, the perhaps the pinnacle for most of the season, which will be the World Championships in Halifax in early August. But then there are the European Championships, which um, some people will be looking forward to later on in August in Munich. Yeah. So, great conditions here at the Labe Arena Regatta course. Nice and warm, high 20s temperature, light breeze on the course. Sebastian Brendel, he's always happy to have his photo taken with his fans. He's very good at that, the, the policeman. And uh, just one or two perhaps need to step up on a box. He's a big guy, isn't he? But um, <laughs> Yeah, that's really nice because that all means so much to, to some of these guys just to get a picture with him. It will. You're absolutely right. We saw that, didn't we, with Fernando Pimenta um, and his partner in the K2. You know, uh, first his first season, Joao Duarte, in, in the senior ranks, and now he's paddling with, with someone he really look, looked up to, and that, that breeds the next generation of athletes. It must be a difficult trick when you're at the pinnacle of career, perhaps coming to the, was the end of your career, but you want to still keep going, and yet you're bringing on these youngsters who may well end up beating you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you've got a few years yet to worry about that, Rebbe, <laughs> so, hope so I'm sure. Right, so we'll have the um, medal ceremony coming up very shortly. C1 Women 200 metre medal cer ceremony. Really exciting race that one was. It is an Olympic event. Yaris Ladis Du Bois was the winner. The young Cuban paddler. Lin Wenjun came late to that race and picked up the silver and actually alongside her with silver is Katie Vincent oh, okay another tie <laughs> yeah they're down tied both 45 19 so Du Bois 45 08 but Wenyun and Vincent both 45.19 so they will be sharing the silver medal good result for Katie Vincent she's sort of the the senior member of the team particularly for the canoe now you know given as you said earlier that Lawrence Van San Lapointe who was really in the driving seat of women's canoe for so long. You know, several years ago, she was miles ahead of the rest yeah, of the field. Yeah, yeah, um, she was kind of the first one to set the set the pace. Yeah, and, and since then, we've got the likes of Lin Wenyun, we've got the likes of Du Bois, and of course, Lutzan, Ludmila Lutzan, who's racing here, the Ukrainian who are helping to build and, and move things on from them. But Katie Vincent, she's keen to go forward, perhaps taking some of the youngsters with her towards her home world championships this year and then Paris 2024 for the Olympic Games. These are cool bikes. Yeah, the folding bikes. Quite a good thing to use when you're over in Europe and you're taking them from from country to country. Uh, it's a nice cycle around the course here. In fact, I went for a run around the regatta course yesterday. Uh, you can get right the way around here. Uh, there's a few paths in amongst the trees beyond that as well. I didn't quite venture that far, but always nice, nice to have a run around. Single, 200 meters even. 
The medals will be presented by Toshi Furuya, ICF Canoe Sprint Committee Chair. In this race, we have two silver medalists. First is Canadian. So, medal Andy ceremony Vincent. here of the C1 Women 200 meters. And now, as we said, we think we've got two, uh, two second places. Indeed, we do. So, Katie Vincent and Lin Wen Yun, winners of the silver medal. Uh, 45 seconds there, which is a good time. Not a world's best time, as we said. It wasn't far off, though. And uh, Laurent Vincent Lepoint has the world's best time. The Olympic best time is Nevin Harrison. Sadly, the um, athlete from the United States isn't here. We may well see her at Poznan. I'm not sure if we do, but she's another exciting um, paddler alongside the likes of Ludmilla Lutz and that are driving this sport forward. And then, of course, we've got the winner. Very exciting. The tall figure of Yaris Leidis Du Bois from Cuba. There she is. <laughs> She's delighted with her gold medal, as is Toshi Furuya, who's the <laughs> ICF Canoe Sprint Committee Chair. So there they go. They'll get their photos for social media. The ubiquitous selfie, I'm the sure. Selfie, the podium the, selfie. Yeah, podium selfie has become kind of a thing that these athletes do um, all the time. We've got a few races um, to go yet. So we'll be looking forward to the C1 women 500 meters, the K2 women 500 meters, the K2 men 500 meters. And although we've got a small room in commentary here, we have three people with us. So Bridget Hartley has joined us, South African um, paddler and Olympic medalist, of course. Back in 2012, I remember commentating yes, on that. Yes, thanks for the welcome. Yeah. It's good to be here. Well, it's great to have you here, and you're going to join us just for a couple of races. Um, and perhaps you can chat with myself and Rebby as we as we go through the C1 women over 500 metres. And also we'll be looking, uh, and then after that, the K2 500, both women and men. So we just got the line up there of uh, who we're expecting to see in the C1 women 500 meter final A. We'll just take you through that in just a moment. Just very briefly, Bridget, what have you enjoyed watching this weekend so far? So I, I'm actually quite a fan, obviously, of the women's races, um, but there's there's quite a few of the men's K4s that, especially I suppose the 500 meter, which is now the Olympic distance, that is really enjoyable. And I think this weekend the K2 men has become, 500 has become one of the most popular events. Um, I haven't seen so many K2 men on a start line ever. So yeah. I think we're up for a, an exciting race just now. Yeah, yeah, K2 men's desperately competitive. I mean, we saw the likes of Josef Dostal was in the C final. So it just shows how, how competitive it is. Yes. I watched his race, it just looked like the end of their semi wasn't the best. Um, right. But yeah, that's this is top racing. That's the way it goes, it's competitive at this level, isn't it? Right, so we'll see the C1 women 500 meters. There they are lining up. We've got Sloan McKenzie from Canada in one. Julia Osend also from Canada in two. Wan Yin from China in three. Lisa Yarn, the German, goes in lane four. Ludmilla Lutzan, who we were just talking about, actually, she's in lane five. She's had a busy weekend competing in the 1,000 and the C2 and also the C1 this race over 500. Maria Olarasu, the Moldovan, goes in six. Katarina Spezov-Kiewicz from Poland in seven. Claudia Kuto from Spain in eight. Britain's Katie Reid who uh, went to the Olympic Games, didn't quite make the final there, but she's in the final here and she goes in lane nine. So 500 metres, we could again see some perhaps different race plans here, but not as much room for manoeuvre, Rebby, in the 500 metres as there would be in the 1,000. Yeah, but I still think because most of these girls will be coming from the 200, they'll have quite a lot of um, different ways to attack this race. So we'll still see a bit of differences. Yeah, and there's that distinctive style, isn't there, of Ludmilla Lutzan. Really locks on with straight arms at the front of that blade. A really long, almost sometimes looks labouring stroke, but she's incredibly strong, uh, isn't she? The right-hander and going well at the moment. And perhaps um, she's worked on endurance because she did so well in the 1,000-metre race. And now she's right up there in the 500, but working extremely hard as we get to the halfway point. 
You can see Lisa Jan, the German, in lane four, going well and really looks dynamic on that stroke. This is always the important part of a 500 meter race. Revy will agree. Yeah, uh, it's, for sure. If you can hold it together, yeah, and have a strong finish, then it's always good in the 500 meters. It's super tough. Everything hurts, and it's encouraging to see how many girls are racing the 500 from different countries now too in the C1. Yeah, indeed it is. Uh, you know, it's just got more and more competitive. We were talking about the days of when Lauren Van San Lapointe was just dominating, and that doesn't happen now. And that's really good for the sport and the development. And and you know, well done to the ICF for getting this in the Olympic program, which has driven the development of this sport. And we can see there, well, quite just, a race coming up now. Well, yeah, I was just about to say we could just about see, but there's really two paddlers here. We've got Germany Ludmilla and Lutzen. the Ukraine <laughs> race yeah. for the line. It's going to be on the lunge for the line now. Lutzan's going to. Perhaps just get it ahead of the German, but goodness me, they're quite a long way ahead. And Poland in third. So there we go. So Ukraine, Ludmilla Lutzan, a popular winner as she always is, but particularly now given what's happened to Ukraine, just ahead of the German. But as you spotted, Bridget, a really, really tense uh, final few strokes. Yeah, that just shows it's not over till it's over. She pulled through in the last 10, 20 meters. She did pull through well, and obviously the, her endurance work is going well. We've seen Ludmilla Lutz on it. Always thought she's very impressive over the 200 meter distance. But having won the C1000 yesterday, and now the C1500, it must show that her endurance is right up there. So, very different this is in technique as well. You look at the two paddles alongside each other. The really choppy short stroke of Lisa Yan and that longer stroke, sort of more drawn out from Ludmilla Lutzan. She made it work for her really well, getting a really good leg drive. Look at it, putting the pressure on that front leg, locking on to that stroke. Here we go. Last few strokes. Stroke for stroke until the last bit. Yeah, she just pulled away, didn't she? Just over the last couple of strokes there, Ludmilla Lutzan, and then a bit of a battle, a separate battle uh, for third place, and it was the Polish Katarina Spezkiewicz who took the bronze. Just see what it means to look at Mila Lutzan. And she doesn't speak English, but when she was interviewed yesterday, you could tell by her expression and the look on her face just what it meant to her. And she's with us again now. Uh, Ludmilla, that's two wins. That was close, though. How do you feel? I'm very happy. It's my second gold on this stage of the Cup of the I'm to to Ukraine И це вкотре доказує, що ми найсильніша нація, і ми скоро переможемо саму головну війну, яка коїться в нас на землі. Слава Україні! Спасибо. So, I mean, again, she doesn't speak English, but I think we could really take the sense of what she was saying, what it means to her. I mean, I dread to think what it's been like for the last few months for all these Ukrainian paddlers, for all the Ukrainian people, in fact. And it's just wonderful to see her get a win. She will be popular when she receives her medal a little bit later. 2.08 for her, 2.08 for Lisa Jan, just over half a second behind. And then the Polish paddler Katarina Spezikiewicz uh, in third place. Yeah, and you can see it's not surprising at all just uh, what it means to Ludmila Lutzan. But great to see, great to see her picking up another gold medal. Well done to her, well done to all the Ukrainian team. Again, thanks to the community, canoe community who have been supporting her, particularly the Romanians who have been helping out uh, with their training. So, as we see the flag just flutter a little bit, good conditions here. Um, I presume you've enjoyed racing here, uh, Bridget? So actually, I haven't raced yet. Um, I had a little bit of visa problems, so I only left South Africa on Friday. <laughs> yes, I heard that. Yeah, so yeah. you just made it yesterday, or yes, to yes, right. I arrived midday okay. yesterday. So sadly, right. I haven't raced yet. I was hoping to, but mm. uh, I'll I'll be on the start line in the 5,000 later today. Good. Well, we look forward to <laughs> we look forward to that. Um, but a, a pretty popular venue, would you say, Rebby? With the yeah, others? I would say so because it's normally fair and not too extreme. So I think a lot of athletes like this. Uh, venue. Yeah, it, I think you're right, and it's been good for the canoe paddlers, hasn't hasn't it? Because there's no crosswind, yeah. and as you say, it's fair. So if if you end up in lane nine or lane one, you can still win the race, providing you're quick enough. Now then, two really uh, competitive races to look forward to. I'm really looking forward to Poland against New Zealand, who certainly look good uh, in the semi-finals in this race. This is the women's K2 500 meters. 
We've got Canada in one, Denmark in two. The first Polish crew, Walczykiewicz and Kodleczyki from Poland in three. And Naj and Polowska from Poland in four. Chinese crew in five. Germany in six. Hoskin and Carrington, a new partnership from New Zealand in seven. Peters and Brooks, we mustn't uh, forget those. The Belgians in eight. And then Conin and Vosselman from Netherlands in nine. Right, I'm going to put you on the spot, Rebby. What do you think? Who's going to win this? Uh... If I had to, I'd probably say uh, the Polish crew of Naya and Polaska. Naya and Polaska, yeah, they're going really well, aren't they, at the moment? What do you think, Bridget? I, I think this is going to be an exciting race. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's hard to call a vote. Um, I think that the Polish crew really are strong, um, especially that they've stuck together. So I do agree with Rebi there, but I think there's going to be quite a contest from New Zealand oh, and sure. Germany. I think those, and yeah. maybe, I suppose we couldn't count out the Chinese either. <laughs> yeah, so, right, you, you yeah. sort of uh, spread the, your bets a yeah. little bit there. And the other Polish crew as well look good in the heats and I mean, yeah, you so. know, we've hardly talked about Marta Walczykiewicz in that in that crew in, in lane three, you know, uh, many-time Olympic medalist, uh, many-time medalist, you know, at world level over the short of 200-metre distance. And so, yeah, it really is stacked. And as you said, Bridget, of course, we can't discount Germans either or in any crew boat. Or the Belgians. You never know what they can pull, yeah, the, pull the out Belgians in the last 200. They have a crew together. They've been a crew together for such a long time. Uh, I think that they make that boat work so well. So I think we're in for a treat of a race, yeah. It's all about who gets to the finish line the best. <laughs> yeah, not necessarily who gets away from the start. But no doubt Hoskin and Carrington will get away to a pretty good start. But watch out for them in the middle of the race. They'll they always have a very high frequency off the start. So they, they definitely yeah. are the ones that I would tip to be out the blocks first. Mm, high stroke rate, don't they? They sit up really tall and they, 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 they work so well together. And Alicia Hoskin, I mean, she's only young, just over 20, had heart surgery back five years ago, but things going well for her in the front of that New Zealand boat. So, Canada in one, Denmark in two, Polish crew of Alczykiewicz and Kodleczki uh, from Poland in three, Naj and Polowska from Poland in four, Nan and Yuen from China in five, Pasek and Hake from Germany in six. Hoskin and Carrington in the Black Boat in seven. Peters and Brooks from Belgium in eight. And Conin and Vosselman from Netherlands in nine. That's the left of your picture. You see three in from the left is the New Zealand crew. As expected, got away well. You can see from that Super drone high shot. Straight, great. Yeah, there you go. There they are in picture. The Polish are neck on neck with them, so they've actually had a brilliant start as well. Yeah, they have indeed, haven't they? So it looks like maybe the Polish crew in lane four. Uh, the one that's expected, Naja yeah. and Polowska. Canadians yeah. on the far side, I think, have also got out the blocks nicely, and they're looking quite good so far. Yeah, they're looking well, well drilled. We were just talking about that, that they've got, you know, got a developing squad, have the Canadians, so they'll want to put themselves in the mix there. There's the poles in lane four. Look very controlled at the minute, and a contrast to the high tempo of the New Zealand paddlers. Yeah, and the, the Germans are coming back up now as well. They're, they're, they didn't get as good of a start as, as perhaps the, the poles or the Kiwis, but they're coming back up now. They are, aren't they? Just super smooth, the Germans, all padding that sort of similar style that they have, and it works well in K2. They're really putting the effort in now. Looks to me like emerging as the leaders is that crew in lane four, the poles of Naj and Palauska. But it's going to be close. It's an intense race to go. They're into the Red Boys, the last 100 metres. Just difficult to tell from that camera angle. The Germans always have a strong finish, and they're not changing it now. You can see in the men always and the women, they're powering away towards the end. They are indeed, but the Poles have got an answer to the German questions, it looks like at the moment. It looks like they're going to take the win from lane four. Lane six, that's the Germans, and then New Zealand will take that bronze uh, medal. Wow, what a race. So, Poles, Germans, and New Zealanders, which I think you mentioned all of those uh, <laughs> right at the start. So, well done to both um, Bridget and Rebby there, but it's uh, the Poles who take the win, and they're really paddling well. They've got some great crew boats, haven't they, at the moment, the Polish uh, team. Yeah, that was that was very impressive. Those by, are the medalists from Tokyo last year, that, that Polish crew. Yes, yeah, yeah they, they were. were second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
and uh, and of course uh, also paddling where well, they won the K4 here as well and they look they, they, that Polish crew looked really strong in the semi-finals I thought yeah. yesterday as well control just getting just edging New Zealand out New Zealand maybe they've just got I'm sure there's plenty more to come from them but it's just a bit of more work to do on, on, on delivering the right race plan but you know Alicia Hoskin she's only very young really and she'll learn as she goes on interesting also in the New Zealand boat that of course um, Lisa Carrington's choosing to sit in the back whereas when we saw the likes of Fernando Pimenta he was in the front yeah. setting the rhythm uh, it's the other way around for the New Zealanders now we've got Ross Solly down there for the International Canoe Federation on the pontoon just wandering over to have a word with the Polish paddlers Carolina, Anna, what a great weekend you're having. Uh, silver at the Olympics last year in this event and a nice gold medal today. Well done. Yes, uh, it was a great race. Uh, we come back feeling uh, from Tokyo, so it was a great race. And now we look forward for next uh, racing in the Poznan. You've raced together so much. Uh, it, it must be like you're almost like sisters or twin sisters even. Yeah, a lot of people tell me uh, Carolina is my thir uh, third, third sister. So, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Do you feel like you're stronger than last year even and even at the Olympics? Um, yes, it's uh, we are stronger, but we know uh, we want to do more uh, work for the uh, World Championships because it's uh, important in this year. Really impressive weekend. Congratulations to both of you. Well done. Thank you. So there's that balance, isn't there, between being delighted at winning a gold medal and knowing that most probably the Germans, you know, the other Polish crews, the uh, the New Zealanders are only going to get stronger. Well, we'll soon move on to the. We'll just check the results there. One thirty-nine. Look at that. Polish crew there, 139. Half a second behind with the Germans. New Zealand in third place. And Belgians weren't far behind, were they? Peters and Brooks. Okay, so that's confirmation of the results of the K2 women 500 meters. There they are congratulating uh, each other. Lisa Carrington. Um, well, she's. I think that's super for Alicia, Alicia Hoskin. I'm sure she's delighted with that result, sitting in front of Lisa. I, I almost think that her nerves for this race must have been sky high. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it must be, you know, sitting in front as well, as we said. You, you, you don't get the chance to follow someone. You got, you're expected to... to, to Lisa, Lisa's always the one in the front, so, yeah, so uh, I think they've, yeah, they've had a good yeah. combination. Uh, in the K4 race. as well, they uh, Lisa's in two now, so... Um, Alicia, I guess, would have had some, some practice in that as well. Yeah, it's an interesting choice of, uh, of doing that, isn't it? And they've obviously got a plan for the future and, that you know, they've got a lot of youngsters uh, in the K4 and in that squad who are only going to get better. And they're learning from one of the most professional people we've ever had in the sport. So Yeah, actually, one of the girls um, from their K4, this is her first time ever going in the start block. She's not been in the really? start block, so that's really impressive because they wow. did really well. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? And it just, just shows... Uh, you don't need to worry, well, I haven't got the right equipment or start complaining about that. Look, it's, it depends on your attitude and how exactly. well and how hard that you train. And they obviously do that uh, very well in New Zealand. And we'll be heading up. No New Zealanders in this particular race. This is the 500 metres K2 men's. So we'll see the Lithuanians, always good over the shorter distance of 200 metres. But pretty nimble over the 500 metres as well, Maldonis and Olinik in one. Spisa and Havel, such experienced crew boat members from the Czech Republic. There they are just circling around at the minute. They'll be going in lane two. There they are. Spisa and Havel. And then lane three, Vlicek and Botek from Slovakia. There they are, Slovakians always over the years had such great crew boats. And John Westhausen and Thomas Green from Australia. Of course, the K2 1000 metres Olympic champion and what was one of the best races that we saw in Tokyo. And Tom Green, of course, 
just behind Fernando Pimenta yesterday in the K1 1000 metres. Then we've got two German crews. Germans all battling it out to be in these these top crew boats. There's the Australians in picture, Westhausen and Green. And F Felix Frank and Moritz Flostet. Well, they want this boat for the next World Cup, for the World Championships. But so do Martin Hiller and Thomas Grossman, who are in the lane next to them. So a race within a race in this one for that German spot. There they are. Hiller and Grossman. Then we'll have the Ukrainian crew. Watch out for them. Ole Kukuruk. Kukarik, very experienced over both 200 and 500 metres. Fifth at the World Champs in this particular race with a different partner. Last time round, he's with Ihor Trunov this time round. And then we have the Hungarians, Sander Tokka. Something of an expert over the 200 metres, given that he's the Olympic champion. And Ben Shane Adas. who paddled well just outside the medals yesterday in K1 500. And then in lane nine, expect a good start from Joao Ribeiro and Messias Baptista. They were seventh in Tokyo in the K4. So expecting another tight race on this one? For sure. This is going to be one exciting race, um, especially because we've seen these crews racing with such loaded races along the way. And I think I think the Aussies are on my list, Slovakia and Germany. Those are my three. Uh, and, I would say, and Hungary, I would Hung that. Hungary, yeah. can't leave Hungary out. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. We'll see what sort of start the Hungarians and the Portuguese get there next to each other. Expect them to get away well. Indeed, they do. But, you know, 500 metres, it's got to get the pacing right as well. And you can see lane four, four from the top of the pitch. As you said, Bridget, the Australians, they know how to race, don't they? What a fantastic race that was um, in Tokyo. And they're just only going to get better and better. And what we do know about the Australians is they're very good in the latter part of a race as well. So expect them, if they're thereabouts with a chance towards the end of this, then they could indeed take a win. And the two Germans, two German crews fighting it out against each other. They'll be strong over the second half as well. So difficult to see who went through first there, but Hungary are right up there. Australians looking really good, very, very determined, very crisp on the blades there. And the Czechs, the Czechs Portuguese on the outside. At the end <laughs> Goodness well. me, it could be anyone. From you know, we've got Portugal in lane nine. They're the Hungarians in lane eight. Sander talked to the Olympic champion over 200 meters, struggling perhaps a bit now. And the Portuguese are moving through well in lane nine. It's difficult to see. The Portuguese Australians beginning well. to fade, and in fact, looks like the Ukrainians going well as well. But Ukraine, Australia are back in there. <laughs> so that was a race. That was quite a race. <laughs> that was indeed, wasn't it? It's great sometimes to be wrong. We, we go through these predictions <laughs> yeah, and we think, oh, it's going to be this crew, it's going to be that crew. But Kukarik and Trunov, well, they came through strongly, really, really strongly towards the end, just held their pace together. And uh, Ole Kukarik, I mean, he's been in a lot of good boats. He's the world champions last year. He's been in the K4 here as well this weekend. Um, and uh, it's nice to see how well these guys move together in the boat. It's such unison and power going in, and it's it's really incredible to watch. Yeah, it's really important, isn't it, that? And it must be very difficult over 500 metres, probably more so than 1,000 metres, because it's that much more intense. Mm. One small mistake and the boat loses yeah. its rhythm. Yeah, right, let's have a look here. So we can see Ukraine's in white. Now, three, one, two, three boats to, uh, to their right. That's the Australians. Australia, Port Portugal. Portugal, they wow. They had a great race, eh? <laughs> yeah. They did well. The Portuguese got away well alongside the Hungarians, but then settled and then it obviously came through strongly. Hungarians were great over the short distance which isn't wasn't a huge surprise but it's just that the latter part of the race, the back end if you like. And, uh, Ukrainians down there with Ross. He's not so good I think. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. It was amazing, amazing finish. Thank you, thank you. Uh super emotion presented uh, 
умовах тренувалися, не вдома. Ми не були вдома більше 110 днів. І це перемога для України. І сьогодні ми дуже раді, те, що ми виграли на цій дистанції, змогли показати, що українці – це найсильніша нація, яка може змагатися навіть в тяжких умовах. Слава Україні! Слава Україні! Congratulations, well done. Thank you. It's a real show of solidarity there with the Ukrainians. That's going to be another popular win. And of course we had Ludmila Lutsan uh, winning in the C1 earlier today. So another gold medal for Ukraine. They're going really well at the minute. Under 90 seconds for the Ukrainians there. Vesthausen so and Green. So close between them all. <laughs> Pardon? So close between Indeed. all of them. Indeed, yeah, look at that. So seven crews within a second, an eighth and ninth. Only just over a second behind. It's so uh, competitive, isn't it? And um, this is what happens when something becomes Olympic, isn't it? And then it all gets really, really competitive. Good as me. I don't know what the um, Olympic qualification is going to be like in 2023. Exactly. K2 500. And it's encouraging to see the Ukrainians doing so well after all the challenges um, in different d uh, disciplines. I think it's really great. Yeah, it is. We've had it that in K4, we've had K2 here, we've had C1 mm -hmm. um, uh, in, in two different distances with Ludmilla Lutzan as well. The C2 women aren't far off either. So, yeah, it really, really is encouraging to see in what is extremely difficult circumstances. I have to brag, though, about our ex-South African racing for Australia. <laughs> Jean, for the best right. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, indeed. In Born in South Africa, yes. I presume both both of them were so, the yes. two brothers. Yeah. So there's actually three brothers. The right. Two of them, the oldest and the youngest. They yeah, they're racing. Um, and they were in the town close to where I'm staying now. So we trained a lot with Jean when he was younger. Wow. As a junior, so it's really cool to see him competing at this level. And now his brother got a thousand K2 medal earlier. So it's yeah, it's quite special to see. And I also watched him winning in Tokyo. <laughs> Wow, so it's so perhaps his grounding there for that Olympic gold medal came in South Africa, which is really, really good to hear. Uh, we're just going to have um, a medal ceremony. This should be... Now, I think this looks like a C1 women medal ceremony. So this is the C1 women 500 meters. You saw Ludmilla Lutzan, who was the winner there. She's just going out to receive her medal, which is nice. German in second, Polish paddler Ladies in third. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalist for the women's canoe single 500 meters event. The medals will be presented by Andrei Jelenc, member of ICF Board of Directors. So Andrei Jelenc there, he'll be giving out the medals. Andrei is member of the, the ICF Board of Directors. And he's delighted to see. His fellow Slovenians going well in the women's kayak, but this is the women's canoe, 500 meters. Thank you. Katarina Spezkovic. And then silver medal going to Lisa Jan from Germany. There she is. And a popular winner, no doubt, will be Ludmila Lutzan. It's a little bit strange. <laughs> who was second in the World Championships this time around at the World Cup. She's first. Gold medal to go with a 1,000 metre medal from yesterday. And as we said at the time, good to see such competitive racing, Rebbe. Yeah, for sure. I imagine her build up to this wasn't ideal or perfect, but she's done well to, to get here and, and, and doing so well. So well done to her. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other athletes will feel very much the same. 
and the, the difficulties that the Ukrainians have had has almost brought a lot of the other athletes together in support of them actually which yeah. is nice yeah so she's popping now Bridget has had to leave so thanks very much for Bridget Hartley for being with us this morning and all the best to her for her 5k's this afternoon And Rebby, will you be paddling this afternoon? No, I'm not. I don't mean in the 5k, I just mean <laughs> oh. as, it, as in, uh, f will you be just paddling? In no, I did a session this morning, right. so. Good no. stuff. Maybe go for a run this afternoon. <laughs> well, I can recommend it. Nice <laughs> run round the track, round the course there. Ludmilla Ludzan, big smile on her face. Don't think, she, don't think she'll be going for a run. <laughs> She's got a few uh, autographs to sign. Congratulations, and Slavo Ukraine. I do hope that we'll see her in Poznan as well. You'll be able to join me on Planet Canoe. We've got Para Canoe. We've got Sprint Canoe in Poznan next weekend. And a lot of these athletes will be making their way over to Poland over the next couple of days to prepare themselves for World Cup 2, the second and final World Cup of the season. And for some, the second and final opportunity for them to get some racing experience before the World Championships. There's nothing quite like racing. Yeah. In order to prepare yourself, yeah. you know, for the, for the, the big events. The best kind of training, really. Mm. Racing against the best in the world. Yeah, that's what they get here, and thankfully we were able to do that because over the last few years, the World Cups haven't been quite the same, have they, as, no. as what we'd seen previously. Particularly if, you know, so for some of the athletes from further afield, they can't take part in the European Championship, so actually the World Cup's their, their big chance to make the most of the opportunity of, of paddling at that elite and intense international level. Well, we've just got two more races to go. And it won't be long before we're, we will see the mixed, we'll see the mixed C2 500 meter final and the mixed K2 500 meter final. Now mixed races are something that the ICF have been looking to develop. Um, and has got a little bit more competitive over the last few races um, that we've seen. Not sure how the paddlers approach it, Rebby, at the moment. It's more of a bit of fun, I guess. I would say so, but of course when they line up, they'll take it seriously and, and then do their best. But I think I think this is this is the fun fun part of the World Cup series. Yeah, nice to have a bit of fun as well. Yeah. And and actually for some of these paddles, just to get on a start, light, start line again, and as you said, if, if you're a New Zealand paddle and you don't have the start, boots uh, then just to get in into those and experience an international start is an important thing yeah for sure so c2 mixed 500 meter final i also think it's good for for team members because obviously boys and, and girls don't usually train together or, or paddle together so i reckon it would build a bit of um like a team bonding. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, you're right. And and I mean, you yourself paddle with canoe paddlers, don't yes. you? And, and, and yeah. with some of the younger men. Um, so he brings those together. That's a good point. Now we'll have Viraj Bala and Adam Fikit in in lane one for Hungary. There they are. Bala it, uh, in the front there. And Fabian Schatz and Isabel Zanin from Germany are in two. There they are. A little bit of a discrepancy in size. It's like um, it's like Brendel and Hecker, isn't it? In, uh, that we saw previously taking the win in the C2000. It's interesting to, to see if like how they decide who goes in front, whether the girl or the boy goes in front, and looks like they're changing it up in every crew. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Because it gives you options, and then they can decide, the paddlers can decide, and the coaches, well, what's going to be best? And it's nice to have that bit of variety in a race. We've got the Canadians there. We can see Sophia Jensen and Alex Plomto in lane three. Andre Rybachok, very experienced Romanian paddler in the front of that Romanian boat. And Anastasia Chetverikova, who normally paddles C2 with Ludmila Lutzan, who we saw receive her gold medal from the C1 event a little bit earlier. Liu Hao and Sun Mengya, the Chinese, go in lane five. 
Tyler Laidlaw and Julia Ossend from Canada go in six. There they are. And then we'll have Alexander Kituski and Sylvia Skrbinska. Another medal winner. She was in the C1 just earlier this morning. They're in seven. Mihai Chihaya and Maria Olarasu from Moldova go in eight. And David Koryansky and Kingso Takash from Hungary will be in nine. Katarina Spurskiewicz, who's in the Polish boat, she was the bronze medalist in the women's C1 500 meters behind Ludmila Lutzan and Lisa Jan just about half an hour ago. So a couple of these paddlers have only had half an hour's break. Maria Olarasu, the Moldovan, was also in that final. So a short turnaround, Rebi. I guess they don't have a lot of time. Yeah, no. Maybe to refuel, get back in the boat and just try and get the lactic acid out of that system. Yeah, but I'm sure they would have done something similar in, in training, so they'll be they'll be used to that. It's just going to hurt that extra little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will. And uh, they're going to have to dig deep and try and put the pain out of their mind if they're going to come out with a medal from this event. So this the penultimate race of this chunk of action from this morning, just going through into the early afternoon. This is the mixed C2 500 meters. This is not an Olympic event, but remember the Olympics are very keen, the IOC are very keen to have mixed events. We've got mixed relays in the likes of, of athletics and of swimming and triathlon. And so we're doing it in our own special way and sprint canoe. Chinese going well at the moment. China actually have the record. 1.44 is the world best time for this. There they are in lane five, looking pretty good at the moment. A lot of the crews choosing to put the man in front, but not every crew necessarily. And the Chinese leading there in lane four at the minute. Lane three, that white boat going well also um, at the moment. The white boat, that's Sophia Jensen, Alex Plomto from Canada in lane three. So they're just on the right-hand side of your picture. China in the middle, maybe still leading at the moment. Poles are up there as well. Just have a look as they go through. So China have got a pretty commanding lead. Still just behind them are the Canadians in lane three. It looks but like a tight race for second and third. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, and it looks like China's maybe pulling away, but the Canadians got to keep it together. And the, the Canadians one of the few crews that have the woman in front and the man behind, but it's going well for those two at the moment. But actually, some of the other crews coming up as well, as we see the Ukrainians, very experienced, Rybachok in the front of there, Chet Verikova behind him. I should say, actually, Chet Verikova's in the front, and Rybachok uh, is behind there in the red boat, and it looks like they're looking to try and move through into second place, but nobody's going to deny the Chinese of a gold medal in that. They've clear water between them and the rest of the field. And Ukraine and Canada. So Canada got away out early, got away well, didn't they? But they managed to hold on for that bronze medal. Yeah, that was, that was impressive. And then Hungary came up at the end in the last 150 meters and almost got that bronze. Yeah, late charge from the Hungarians there. Koryanski and Takash. So there we see the start. Important in the canoes, of course. Very unstable. Important that they get away well. Certainly the Canadians did really, really well. And good middle part of that race. Maybe faded towards the end, but did enough to take that medal. But the Chinese really dominated using that really long stroke that is set up um, by Liu Hao. And they're uh, working well for them. Boat running pretty true. They had a long margin between them and the rest of the field. The Ukrainians, sorry. Yes, the Ukrainians came through late. Just managed to get their nose ahead of the Canadians. And top of the picture we had Balat and forget. And interesting that the Ukrainians are both paddling on the right. 
and obviously did well. You, you see that, you see that a few times. Um, French and the Hungarian men did that um, the last few years. So impressive. But you do, and you actually see it more in the women than you do the men, don't yeah. you? But we've saw seen that in this mixed race, which is good, and we may well just get a quick word with Ross on the pontoon with the Chinese. Uh, congratulations to both of you. It's nice to win a gold medal in this race. Yes, I think nice, very nice. Uh, mixed day two is very interesting. I like it. I like it. Do you do it together very much, the training? Have you trained together very much? Uh, not here, uh, because of my uh, same team. Uh, no training, maybe competition together. It's uh, together day two. Nice, very nice. And we have people watching in China. Would you like to say something in Chinese to your Chinese fans? Uh, well, looks like they practiced that, but of course our sport really popular in China and uh, there's a big following of canoe sprint racing and of course this is a global sport because we had such South American success at the Olympic Games as well which takes this sport much broader than perhaps its European base. So there we see Chinese Quick one. time. Yeah, 1.45, not far from a world's best time in fact for Hao and Meng Ya um, and then Ukraine and Canada picking up a bronze medal. Well, they'll be pleased with that I'm sure. So just one more race, the K2, mixed K2, 500 meter final. Coming up shortly, Rebbe, we might just catch a minute to, to, you know, to summarize the racing that we've had today. We started off with the women's C1 200. We've had the K1 women 200. We've gone for a thousand meters with C1 men and K2 men and K1 women and C2 men. And then uh, we had K2 men and women over 500 meters, really intensely competitive races. A lot of uh, a lot of tight races and a lot of exciting ones. Yeah, there was. I mean, and we talked, didn't we, about the the fact that it was an A, B, and C final for the men's K2. So that was incredibly um, competitive. Yeah, it's almost as uh, close as the K2 200 used to be in the men's racing. Yes, I remember that well. That was that was really close. The days of Johnny Schofield and Liam Heath, of yeah. course, winning those Olympic <laughs> medals in London and Tokyo. And it's such a shame when that came out of the yeah. program. Um, but yeah, really, really competitive. Good to see Ludmilla Lutzan win another medal in the C1 Women 500. K2 women was interesting. New Zealand just getting a bronze, but Poland looking really strong in that. And then, of course, the men's K2. Uh, we didn't see the Ukrainians really coming through for the win, did we? But they did incredibly well just ahead of the Australians and the Portuguese. So, a really developing event, the mixed races. This is the final one of this session today. We do have the 5,000 meter races to look forward to, so I hope that you'll join myself um, on Planet Canoe for those. They start 2.15 local time with the women's C1 5,000 meters. But before all that happens, we've got the final race of this session, which is the K2 mixed 500 meters. Ashton Reiser and Olivia Brett go in lane one. Marko Dragoslavevic and Dunja Stanojev from Serbia in two. Also from St Serbia, Dostanic and Zdela in three. Martin Nathel and Melina Anderson from Sweden. There they are. They go in four. Max Krenschmidt, Pauline Jacks from Germany. They go in five. Expect them to be quick. Alyssa Bull and the younger of the Westhausens, Pierre, he goes in lane six. They go, should say, in lane six. Denmark in seven, William Gravlund and Emma Bock. And then the lineup will be completed by the Canadians, Brian Malfessi, Natalie Davison. There's the Danish. Should see the Canadian in just a minute in lane eight. There they are. 
Got a medal in the C2 mixed. Will they get a medal in the mixed K2? Well, we'll see in the next two or three minutes. And then Edmund Jensen and Elise Erland go in lane nine from Norway. Perhaps some different choices of who's going to sit in the front yeah, of that boat. Yeah, I was just thinking that. It's mainly, in most boats, men are in, in the front. But there's a few with the girls. It is, and start really important. They work together off the start. Different, perhaps, power phases of the stroke as well. Australians getting away well there in lane six. Alyssa Ball, she'd have been boosted in confidence from that. Really convincing win in the K1000. Max Renschmidt, Max Renschmidt's done everything, hasn't he? He's such a great crew boat paddler, so he's in the front of that German boat. Expect them to be quick. Swedes looking good um, as well. Good They're start from the Serbians. Yeah, they lane are. Two. Lane two, Dragoslavevic, not that surprising given yeah. that he's <laughs> such a great 200 meter paddler, isn't he? So we'll see if he manages to hold on to that as the paddlers get down through the halfway mark and approach the last 200. Serbians there look really look good, don't really they? Good. They're really well together. Yeah, very controlled there. Expect the Australians to come through the end with Alyssa uh, Bull's uh, endurance. Yeah, and she's just keeping that stroke really, really long, really latching onto it well and giving every opportunity, really, for Pierre Westhausen to, to lock onto that. Watch out for the Germans coming through now. You can see their stroke rate picking up. Oh, well spotted, just got to keep the time in the Germans, just looking at perhaps a little bit ragged, but they're moving through ominously on the Australians, it's going to be close this one, looks like they've got the lead now, they've got the bit between the teeth and not, not going to let it go from here, so Max Renschmidt, Pauline Jaegsch, they take the win, very close for second place between Sweden and Australia. Great second half from the Germans. Big smile on Pauline Yaks on her face. I'm not sure, actually, it might be a grimace. <laughs> I um, think it's a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly uh, they worked hard for that, didn't they? And uh, a really good second 500 from them. They're in lane five, middle of the pitcher. As you spotted, Rebbe, the Serbians got away well. Australians got away well. But it was the Germans that were strongest over the second half of that race. Perfect race plan by the Germans. Yeah, you spotted them, didn't you? Come through and yeah. just lift their stroke rate, a bit more power in the stroke, just move through smoothly, as they often do, actually, in, in any race we see in the crew boats. Always strong towards the back end of the race. There they go, we'll see them go through first, just check for second, looks like the Australians. And a little bit like the women's canoe events as we approach Tokyo, we may well see the mixed events developing quite a lot more in future. Well, that ends our session this morning. We hope we may well see the German mixed crew there down on the pontoon with Ross, and we'll bring this session to a close. Max, Pauline, congratulations. Uh, it's something a little bit different, uh, and you have a gold medal, so congratulations, Max. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. It was a nice race, and uh, she pushed. Uh, she pushed very hard, so we had a bad, good end fight. So I'm happy. Yes. Pauline, what is it like to be in a boat with an Olympic gold medalist? Yes, it's a uh, very uh, pleasure. <laughs> He's the best frontman in the whole world. So thank you very much. <laughs> I have to say thank you. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the mixed K tour? It's, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, for us it's also fun. So it's not the normal boat that you paddle, and yeah, for the end, it's a good, a good race. So it makes a lot of fun. But it's very hard for you because we are, 
we cannot uh, pull so much <laughs> like him. Good team to go okay today, so well done, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, watching them, and it seemed to me a little bit like, uh, like um, Max Rentschmidt was pulling uh, along, and it was just up to Pauline Yakes to kind of to, to follow that, and I'm sure if this this develops, she'll you know they'll get be much better at being able to work together um, in that. But in this case, given that he's an Olympic gold medalist, he was able to do that. So we got Germany in first, Australia second, and Sweden take the bronze medal. So that concludes the events that we've had. We've seen 11 finals this morning, four of them in Olympic disciplines. The rest impossible uh, developing events for the future, particularly the mixed K2 and C2, which was a nice fun event to finish off with. And just maybe a final thought, Revy, was there anything particular that you, yeah. you, you think, yes, I, I really enjoyed that, or was it just the competitiveness of the K2s across would, both women and men? Yeah, I'd probably say if I had to pick, I'd say the two K2 and the men's C1000 event stood out to me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it, it, it was great to see, wasn't it? And I, I really enjoyed watching the K2s, I must admit, and women's K2 in particular. That was a fantastic race with the Poles getting ahead of the Germans and the New Zealanders. I'm a little bit surprised. I'm delighted, I must say, with the Ukrainians picking up two gold medals as well. Well, we'll, we'll have a quick look at the medal table. There we go. And we'll have to take our leave in just a moment. We'll see Germany going from outside the top three in the medal table right up to the very top with three golds, two silvers and a bronze. Ukraine, and maybe a, a little bit of a surprise, but a really popular one in second place, picking up two gold medals today to take them to three gold, two silver and one bronze as well. And... Actually, they've got the same number of medals as Germany, so I would think they're, they're both top of the medal table. There we go. And Spain in third place. And, uh, well, it's been a fantastic morning here at Arecice. Uh, Rebi, thank you very much for joining thank us. It's you. been a real <laughs> pleasure to have you and hope that in the future we'll see you again. And good luck for the training as you prepare thank for you. next weekend. <laughs> Well, that's been the racing for this session this morning. Thank you for joining me, Mally Johnson, on Planet Canoe. I look forward to seeing you at around about quarter past two local time for the beginning of the 5K races here at Recite at the first World Cup of the 2022 season. Hope I'll see you later.